How does Captain America's shield bounce? In this video, I'm going to take a look at some of the incredible physics behind Captain America's bouncing vibranium shield. Hi there, I'm Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and on this channel, you're going to find videos about the science and engineering of superheroes, Star Wars, and other topics. So if you're enjoying this video, be sure to give it a like. Right, let's jump straight into the physics of Captain America's shield. In the new series, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Sam Wilson eventually ends up with Captain America's shield, even though he gave it up at the start, becoming the new Captain America as a result. What's really interesting though about the show is that we see not only Sam Wilson using the Captain America shield, but also John Walker, Bucky Barnes and the Dora Milaje also use the shield in the series. Now the shield is a protective device, but it can also be used as a weapon. And when used as a weapon, it's important to get it to bounce or move in a certain way. So how do Steve Rogers, Sam Wilson, Bucky Barnes, even John Walker get the shield to move in a particular way when they throw it? In other words, how do they get the shield to bounce in the way that they want it to bounce? Now the shield is partially made from vibranium, a fictional element that's near indestructible. By the way, you can check out my video in relation to vibranium and the periodic table of elements via the link at the top of this video. Right, let's get down to the bouncing Captain America shield. So what happens when it bounces? Objects that bounce like a tennis ball demonstrate elastic behavior. When a tennis ball hits the ground, its atomic structure deforms and then it springs back from the ground into the air in its original form. Though a fully elastic bounce means that it doesn't lose any energy during the bounce. But that's not the case for a tennis ball. If you drop a tennis ball from a starting point, it will hit the ground, bounce back up and reach some end point. But in this case, the starting point and the end point are not the same because during the bounce, the ball actually lost energy. In this case, energy is lost during the impact between the ball and the ground in the form of many different forms of other energy, such as sound, such as heat, and also in deforming the ball itself. Captain America's shield though, when it bounces, doesn't seem to be losing energy. In fact, it could be gaining energy when it bounces. We'll get back to that in a bit. I mentioned that the tennis ball loses energy when it bounces, but what particular energy can we talk about with regards to the tennis ball when it's moving. Well, the energy is called kinetic energy and it's related to the velocity of the tennis ball. Here's a ball heading towards the ground with velocity V1. It bounces with velocity V2. Now, if V1 is equal to V2, it's an elastic collision, meaning that no energy is lost. However, if V2 is equal to zero meters per second, then it's a completely inelastic collision and all energy is lost. Now this isn't probably going to be the case for a tennis ball. This would be more likely for a bag of cement. However, in the case of a bag of cement, the bag wouldn't be intact after it hits the ground, given that it's not known for its bounceability. And instead you'll be left with a pile of cement. We can figure out how elastic a bounce is, whether it's a tennis ball, whether it's a bag of cement. We already know it doesn't really bounce that well or Captain America's shield by looking at the velocities before and after a bounce and relating them by the coefficient of restitution. Back to the example of the tennis ball. It hits the ground with velocity V1 and bounces back upwards with velocity V2. The coefficient of restitution is V2 over V1. If V1 is equal to V2, the coefficient is equal to one. If V2 is equal to zero, which is highly unlikely for a tennis ball, the coefficient is equal to zero. This is more likely the case for a bag of cement. If it's a new tennis ball, the coefficient of restitution is 0.75. And for Captain America's shield, the coefficient of restitution is less than one, but it might be quite close to one. As I've said, the coefficient of restitution for Captain America's shield is probably very close to one, which means that it loses very little kinetic energy during a bounce. And it doesn't seem to really matter what material the shield is bouncing from, in terms of how its velocity behaves before and after a bounce. We've seen it bounce off trees. 
We've seen it bounce off metal. And we've seen it bounce off padding around trees. Earlier on I mentioned that when the shield is thrown, it has kinetic energy, which is related to its moving or translational motion through the space around us. But what other energies might be associated with the motion of the Captain America shield? We already know that it's got kinetic or translational energy due to its motion. But is it using chemical energy to move through the air? Definitely not. Is it using nuclear energy or does it have nuclear power behind its motion? Definitely not. But what about rotational energy? Is it rotating when it's moving through the air? Well, yes, it is. It definitely is. We've seen that in the films. It absolutely does rotate, which means it has rotational energy. Rotation is super important for the motion of the shield when it's thrown. When the shield is spinning or rotating while it's in motion, it experiences something called the Magnus Effect. The Magnus Effect is really important for spinning objects because with this effect, the path that the object will follow when it's thrown is completely different to when it's not spinning or rotating. And the Magnus Effect is caused by pressure differences on opposite sides of the object. In sport, the Magnus Effect is really important. In golf, a ball with backspin which means that it is spinning in the opposite direction to which it's actually moving will allow the ball to go further. So when the shield spins as it's moving through the air, that will affect the path that the shield will follow through the air. In other words, by spinning the shield in the right way, you can get the shield to move in all of these crazy curved paths that we see in the MCU. That thing does not obey the laws of physics at all. Sorry, Peter. I think it does obey some of the laws of physics. It sounds basically like the Captain America shield is a frisbee. Ultron was right. The most versatile substance on the planet. And they used it to make a frisbee. And in the MCU, we know that it is really important that when you throw the shield, it's got to spin because otherwise it's not gonna come back. And there is a classic example of this in the series The Falcon and the Winter Soldier when John Walker throws the shield in episode 4 of The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. It doesn't look like it's spinning and it just lodges itself in a wall. And this could be because John Walker didn't put enough spin or any spin on the shield when he threw it. Of course it could also have something to do with the material properties of the wall. And finally, let's look at the speeding up of the shield. Earlier on, I said that the coefficient of restitution of Captain America's shield is less than one. It's probably very close to one, but nonetheless, every time it bounces, it will still lose energy because its coefficient of restitution is less than one. Yes, we see the shield bouncing with extreme ferocity, and it's as if the velocity of the shield isn't decreasing at all. It could actually be increasing. So where is this extra moving or translational velocity coming from? Well, it could be coming from that all important spinning of the shield. You see, when an object bounces off of a surface, it can convert some of its rotational energy to kinetic energy or vice versa. But what if it's a case that vibranium just happens to be really good at converting rotational energy into kinetic energy when it bounces. This means that when the shield bounces, it can regain some of the lost kinetic or translational energy by converting some of the rotational energy to kinetic energy, but it might be spinning just a little bit slower after the bounce. And this, to be honest, isn't a skill you can pick up really quickly. When Sam Wilson finally gets his hands on the shield again in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, he spends quite a lot of time training with the shield. And that is throwing the shield, getting it to bounce in the right way. And he makes quite a lot of mistakes because of course it's a process. He has to get used to the idea of when you throw the shield, you gotta spin it in the right way. Which is exactly what professional frisbee players do because they throw frisbees to get them to spin and move in the right way. So quite clearly, spinning is the name of the game for the shield and for frisbees. And you know, I gotta say it again, Ultron was quite right. 
And of course, all of this bouncing and spinning has no effect on the structural integrity of the shield because it's partially made from vibranium, the fictional element that is almost near indestructible. I say almost near indestructible because if it encounters one of Thanos' weapons again like that from Avengers Endgame, it might be in a little bit of trouble. So there you have it, my theory on the bouncing and spinning physics of Captain America's shield. And a question to you, what other factors do you think are important when it comes to building or designing a shield that can bounce and spin and act like Captain America's shield? Be sure to leave your suggestions and your ideas in the comments below this video. Well, thanks for watching this video on Captain America's bouncing shield. Be sure to stay tuned for more videos in relation to superheroes, Star Wars, and lots of other topics. I've been Dr. Barry Fitzgerald, the superhero scientist, and until I see you again, always think super.